you feel very confident with your with your chipping and your pitching, then you'd probably take the fringe out play and lob it onto the green. Um, there's not a lot of green to work with, so that's a, a less of a um, you know that's the less percentage shot. But for a good player with good fundamentals, they'll they'll take this shot on every time. Um, you know, for amateurs who don't feel so confident. Maybe you're going to use an iron iron and just pitch and run it up the hill and, and trying to get it to, you know, somewhere around uh, inside 10 feet and try and make your par. But uh, you know, this is a shot that um, you know most pros will, will take their lob wedge and you know with the with the right technique they can land it on the green and hopefully stop it right by the pin. Okay, Luke, why don't you, why don't you hit a couple and show us how to do it? Okay, a lot of pressure. To be able to play this, this is a 60 degree lob wedge. Obviously, this has a, a wide uh, bottom on it, and you really want to use this bottom correctly. That's how this club is designed to the brush the, the top of the grass. You see, I didn't really take much of a divot there, and that's because I didn't get the leading edge stuck into the ground, which is what a lot of amateurs do. And, and because of that, the ball will release too much. So you can just go ahead and swing it. It gets, comes down nice and soft and stops and you've got a good chance of getting up and down. Yeah, I see the shot exactly the same way. Lob wedge, land it, try and land it five or six feet onto the green. Um, with all my chipping, I try and land the ball on the green as soon as I can. Um, obviously, the nearer the green you are, the less loft you can use. Um, you know, certainly round the edges of the green, I try and use a flat faced um, club, but like we've got here, you need to use a little bit of loft. Not too bad. I would uh, go for the same shot, um, like Luke said. You have to uh, really watch the um, the shaft lean that you don't put your hands in front of the ball. So open the blade a little bit. I try to feel my hands a little bit behind the ball and swing through. And maybe when the the fringe is a bit firmer, but well, it looks quite good here. But when the fringe is uh, reliable, you can maybe go for um, a less lofted club and bump it in the in the front edge, and then let it release it down the slope. practice when you're around here, try different shots, try pitch and running it, try and lob it on the green, you know, experiment with different uh, ball positions and, and different lofts of clubs and, and that's a really a good way to get better. This is very similar to that shot in terms of fundamentals. Again, the, the biggest problem in bunker play that I see with amateurs is they, again, they put the ball way too far back in their stance and they lean the shaft forward and all that does is expose this front edge which, you know, it's the digger edge uh, that will dig into the sand, create a large, thick divot, and that's not what you want in bunker play. You want to really use this, the back edge of, the, of this, the lob wedge, the bounce, and by doing that, the best way to use it is through setup. And if you get the ball further forward in your stance, you have the shaft almost leaning backwards, you're just turning that, you're exposing that back edge a lot more. And in bunker play, that's what you want. You want nice, shallow, thin divots. So just notice how big of a full and a full uh, swing I take, and how hard I hit. So, again, you you want to see pretty shallow, thin divots. If I'd gotten that blade stuck in the ground, it'd be a much thicker divot that you just don't want to see in bunker play. So, all forward, 
keep the loft on the club. So an another good little uh, thing I sometimes practice is put a bit of sand on it and you've got to really chuck the sand behind you, behind your shoulder. And that's how you want the blade to be. If you take it way shut, the sand's just going to fall off that club face straight away. Chris, I mean, you, you, you've played with a lot of good players. What, what is it about someone like Luke that makes him different to the average tour pro with his short game? Um, well, technically, I think he's one of the best in the world around the greens. Um, and, you know, you probably won't mind me for saying he's not the longest player on tour, but he's the best at get, one of the best at getting the ball in the hole. And that's... Yeah, that's such a such a big factor. Um, a good good experience I had last year. Um, first time I played with Tiger um, in America last year. I hit the ball in better positions than he did off the tee. Um, but round the greens, he's the best I've ever seen. And uh, he turned a 75 into a 68. And yeah, what Luke was saying about using the banks, it's. That's all it is in bunker play, and you can tell by the, the sound. I don't know if anyone close here heard the noise of the, the shots that Luke hit there, but it's like a thud where you can hear the banks going into the sand. Um, and I sort of think, for me, <clears throat> quite a good little drill was sort of almost play them with your feet together to get that feeling of, like Luke was saying, getting the club working under and not driving it forward, sort of almost with a narrow stance. And you, you, you sort of get that, the, get the right strike. Um, and then I sort of, I, I, if I was in a bunker practicing, I'd hit probably 10 or 15 bunker shots like that to get the feel of the banks working. And then gradually, gradually widen my stance to how I'd be playing the shot on the golf course, open the face and try and get that same sort of feeling. So you can sort of feel the club nice. going un underneath, the, underneath the ball and it generally pops up nice and high. Like Luke said, get it well left in your stance, get your hands behind the ball and then you can just be really positive through the sand because you don't have to worry about hitting the ball first and uh, focus on keeping my lower body quiet and working for my upper body. Oh. <laughs> well, again, ball left, hands behind the ball. So, so talk us through this one then, Luke. Tell us what you see, what you're trying to execute, and we'll see if we can try and put it off. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, there's really only one, uh, this is the, only really one way to play this, and that's obviously high, high up. I mean, you could really, if you had no green to work with, you could be really fancy and try and bump it into the bank, but it's a very low percentage shot. So here you're really just, out the rough, you can't really spin it. So you're trying to use height to get the ball to stop. And um, you know the best way to do that is through loft. And obviously using your most lofted club and um, even make, giving it more loft by opening up the club. It's obviously a dangerous, risky shot. Um, it's a shot uh, that just takes a little bit of touch and feel. But um, you know, that's one that uh, you just kind of feel more than anything but again it's similar principles similar fundamentals you're just opening it up you can't ever get the club back with the shaft leaning this way because that's just going to create a lower ball flight and you're not going to be able to stop it like you said it's all about the height um, getting speed particularly in the rough um, I think probably a lot of amateurs tend to decelerate into the into shots like this. I, I open the face quite a lot, 
and try and hit it high and with a lot of speed. In every shot I play, whether it's a long one or a short one, to have a nice, um, soft and then consistent grip pressure. Because when you, when you change that during the swing, then things in your blade are changing as well. Keep it soft and smooth. Beautiful. Okay, guys, I've got one more shot for each of you before we wrap up. We're going to make our way to the top of the green. Really, in case of just letting the slope on the green do all the work for you. Um, obviously, looking at it, there's at least 10 foot of break in this shot. Um, so, I don't know if a lot of amateurs try and read the green. Certainly, we're looking to get it looking like it's got a chance of going in the hole. So, you've almost got to read these sorts of shots like a putt. It's quite, quite a simple, simple shot, really, as long as you've got the, pick the right landing spot, you just let the green do all the work for you. Pick my spot. Just let the green do the work. The crowd is locking you around. Good line, less speed, then the hole's big enough. <laughs> and you can see there's two different ways to play it. Obviously, Chris went a little bit more direct and Dan went a lot higher. Because he went higher and the greens are fast, it, it almost went further away. So you've got to pick your poison a little bit, obviously. Maybe in this situation, Chris's shot was more ideal, gives him an uphill putt. But you know, it's, it's one of those which is quite tough to, to get very close because of the slope. But again, um, they both played it, you know, just how, how I would see it as well. I think when you're on a bit of a down slope, you just, you want to feel like your body is, is with the slope. You know, sometimes you guys will want to get the ball up and you'll lean to the right. And because of that, you'll bottom the club up way behind the ball and, and fat it and not get the right strike. So it's a short shot and you don't just got to concentrate on, on the strike. It's almost like a, to get it, we've hit, what, six shots there, and they're all around 8, 10, 12 feet. It's like the nearest you can probably do is landing it right on the tier there. Like that. I think we'll call that the last shot of the day, guys. <laughs>